As I walked now along the thin path, among the graves, I thought about what bastard the driver was. I told him to stop in front of the village. That's what we always say, you have to stop in front of the village. If I'd said by the river, that's different. So what if he thinks it's more convenient, that it's closer to me? I got a job at the dairy. There's no buses from there. Only to the turn off to Tanevka. From there you can't get anywhere. It's easier to hitch a ride on the highway. But from the motorway, the village is beyond the woods. Everyone always says it's opposite. That means behind the forest. This one was going to Nosavika. So he turned off earlier and took the bypass on the other side of the village. That's what we call behind the river. He was on his way to Nosavika. There's a construction site there now, and there's a lot of non-local people on watch. But you could have told me? When he'd already brought him here, and he was so happy, as if he'd given him a gift. Damn him and his gift. All right. I'll explain. Here's the thing. We're a village between the river and the highway. There's a cemetery behind the river. Behind that is a county road. That's where they dropped us off. None of us go through the cemetery. It's a bad place. It's not just bad, it's real bad. There's no use going through here. What has settled here and what it wants, no one knows. But everyone knows what happens to those who come here at night. Two recent incidents come to mind. One time a guy went missing when he went this way. He was from out of town himself. He asked a girl to marry him here. Seemed like a nice guy. He was. They warned him not to come here. So a friend drove him up. Same situation I'm in now. There was an acquaintance of his on the watch. He was staying with him till late. And he dropped him off. He said he asked to be dropped off here himself. People talk about their superstitions, but you can risk it once. So he did. They've been looking for him for a week. A friend of his was brought in for questioning. Stepan, our local policeman, could not believe that the young, not stupid, gone through the cemetery anyway. Sincerely, he thought that his friend was lying. However, when they found the lad, Stepan only shrugged. He was actually found not far from the road. As far as we have been able to reconstruct the picture, from his fragments of phrases and his location, from some of the things found later, he was walking towards the village. He reached the middle of the cemetery. Then the package he had in his hands he dropped it and ran back. I don't have to explain why he ran. It's clear why he might have run. Because he disturbed something that shouldn't be disturbed. He got as far as the road and another kilometer. He tore up all his clothes, he got all gnarled up. And so he circled around the woods. He was hiding from everyone. When they found him, he was a skeleton. Skinny, dehydrated. Good thing it was summer. And the fear seemed to have given him strength. The second incident was because of that. Some curious people showed up. Bloggers. A bit of mystique leaked onto the internet. That's where they came in. Decided to investigate the cemetery. They set up cameras, set up camp by the road. Anyway, in the morning one ambulance took him away. Psychiatric help. Two of them, a boy and a girl, were taken by their parents. They were okay. Their hair was gray, but at least their speech was a little coherent. And they recognized their parents. I'm walking down the path. I'm not supposed to say prayers. It can be disturbing. I have to think about something else. I imagine I'm on vacation in the Mediterranean. A yacht, the sea, the sun. A warm breeze with an unpleasant scent on it. The main thing is not to look. Just follow the path. The path will lead to a bridge. Nobody knows exactly when it settled here. They say it was during the war. The Germans either shot her or her granddaughter. In general, they hurt her. That's how it started. Everyone always avoided this place. During the war, they say, even during the occupation, there were no Germans here. 
There was no settlement then. There was a village. This cemetery was behind it. Gradually, people left the village. There was no one left. It was standing, abandoned, then a fire and that was it. No village. Only a cemetery. What's interesting is that the cemetery is well kept. It's as if someone's cleaning it up. But nobody cleans it. They don't even walk alone here during the day. That's what young people do, if they want to get on their nerves. And during the daytime, it's like you can hear a voice that's indecipherable. You can't understand a word. It's as if it's not a voice, but the wind is rustling the leaves of the bushes. But it rustles melodiously. I immediately distinguished the rustling and the breeze seemed to intensify. And it blew right in my face. The wind was warm, but there was a noticeable dampness. And the smell is sour, tartly bitter. I held my breath and added a little pace. But I cannot run. No running, everyone knows that. If you run, you will not come. I must think of the good things in life. The rustling grew stronger and a gust of wind blew right into his face. Didn't even touch my hair. I felt it, like someone breathed in my face. Okay, the main thing is not to look up. The main thing is not to look and not to turn around. Everyone knows that from childhood. You can't let evil in. It will ask for it in every way, but you must not let it in. Not even curiosity. Curiosity is like a door. That's why people have been telling tales since the dawn of time, so that children won't be curious. So that all questions are answered, even if those answers make their backs turn cold. The bridge is in no way in sight. But you can't look ahead. Only underfoot. The wind stank hard in the face. The stench was now clearly detectable. No longer the tang and subtle aroma of sourness. No! This time there was a distinct smell of rot. I almost coughed. But you can't do that either. Nothing that turns you towards the world, that binds you to the world. Only thoughts and unconnected dreams. What was I thinking? I forget. What a devil. The ocean. No. The sea. The sea, something about the sea. The sea is water, yes, that's right, water. Sky. Ah, yes, the water and the sea and the sky and the yacht. A resort. The quiet rustle was replaced by a growing rumble. It grew stronger, louder. That it sounded like a voice, I knew at once. But at first I could have fooled myself that it was just the sound of leaves on the wind. But the rumbling was growing. A heavy, uterine one, quite close to my right shoulder. And a rumbling came over my face on the right. The hair moved. Don't look. Don't look. Don't add a step. Still no bridge. Have you lost your way? Don't look. No running either. It's as if something touched my shoulder. On the left. It's still rumbling on the right. It's probably trying to grab me from behind. It's breathing down my neck. I don't remember exactly when the bridge appeared. It came as a reward, a clear fact and a consequence of a job well done. The last meters are the hardest. That's where the wimp gets caught. But I held on. I didn't increase my stride or my breathing. On the contrary, I calmed down. Almost relaxed. I could hear her words clearly. Her cruff voice. She was angry. And I was glad that she was angry, not that I was running in terror, losing my mind. This was my victory. The first plank creaked beneath my foot. I was on the bridge. There was a stream below. It looks more like a stream. The water in it's not good, it's black. Not even pleasing to the eye. In the light of the moon, a shadow flickered across the water and it was quiet. I stepped to the other side and sighed. I ran my hand over my forehead and even shuddered. A perfectly wet palm was in front of my eyes. And bits of something, like matter, stuck to my wet head were on my palm now. Black matter. 
I quickly began to shake my hand, to shake it off. I threw a glance back across the river, even though I knew I shouldn't do that. After all, if they couldn't come to you, they were bound to call to you. A chill ran down my spine like I had never experienced before. A second, and my legs trembled. I dropped to one knee. I struggled to get up and took a step back. I don't remember much else. I only heard the roosters singing in the village. It was like a veil had been blown from my eyes. And I fell to the ground, right on my back. During the week I did not feel well, and then I gradually recovered. One last thing I can tell you. When they call, it's a lot worse than when they try to break in.